Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Preschool All-Stars podcast. I am Bethany Johnson, and I am joined today by Tatiana Green. How are you today? I am doing amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We can't wait to hear your story. I love your spooky background. <laughs> Thank me you. Out a little bit. Um, we want to get to hear about what's going on now, but I always got to ask what was happening before you decided to start your preschool journey. Oh, man. So um, before I started my preschool journey, I had been on the way to a lot of other journeys. Okay, give us a, give <laughs> so us a lowdown. I had gone to school for um, accounting and didn't finish. I had gone to school for um, being an esthetician and didn't finish and things just didn't quite fall into place for those things um and soon after I had um gotten out of school for being an esthetician I decided okay I want to stay home with my kids so I am going to go to college and you know gain a little knowledge about early childhood development and maybe start a daycare in my home you know mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay home with my kids and I'm gonna go hard and I'm gonna have all these kids in my daycare <laughs> yeah and then the business classes started rolling around <laughs> and I was like because they're real they 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 tell you the truth that yeah it'll be a lot of work and yeah. not a lot of pay and yeah. your family won't get a lot of you because a lot of you will be focused on these 12 hour days and all these other kids. And yeah. that just wasn't what I was going for. Um, when I thought <laughs> about the idea of having a home daycare, right? So I just kind of let that fall to the wayside but I also still had this knowledge of early childhood development I had um, focused on babies toddlers and preschoolers when I went to my de my development classes so I really didn't know what to do with this so I kind of just you know focused on my kids and kept um putting into them and into their homeschooling um and how and many kids had you I have three with a bonus baby, my stepdaughter, um, who's actually right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we have four kids all together and okay. um, we homeschool the smallest three. And um, that started because uh, my, my oldest son, um, we just noticed some things that were um, different for him. And so we decided to get a little help for it. And turns out that, um, well, now we know that he has autism, but then it was considered a developmental delay because of mm. his age. Okay. And um, one of the reasons why preschool really um, stuck out to me because my son did go to developmental <sighs> preschool and there were um, good teachers and there were not so good teachers. Right. And I can tell the difference as a parent because mm -hmm. I'm super involved. So I would be at the school in the classroom checking yeah. things out. And um, his first school was amazing. And it gave me such a like a, a, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Hi, baby. And when he had to move schools, it just I didn't get that feeling anymore. I didn't feel like it was helping him anymore. I just felt like people were putting in the hours at the mm. school. Yeah. So I brought them on, brought him on home and decided to just go full force with homeschooling from his preschool age, which was three and his younger brother was two. So I was kind of schooling them like they were twins mm -hmm. because of course he had a developmental delay. So he was right around the same, um, you know, level as his younger brother. Okay. So I got a taste of teaching preschool and I was just like, this is so fun. Like mm -hmm. it's so lighthearted. And then these kids just soak up yeah. all the knowledge because yeah. that's the age that they're in. Their brains just want it all. Yeah. And so I was just like, um, yes, please. <laughs> How can I do this? I started looking into outside preschool programs that I can bring my kids to with me. Mm -hmm. And 
it just didn't work out that way. Um, I ended up getting pregnant with my youngest daughter. And um, soon after that, I was like, I need some money. I started doing, um, you know, MLMs and I did like, um, not flea markets, but you know, the little farmer's markets and stuff yeah. like that. And I was getting a little money, but not enough for me to feel like, yes, this is it. It's yeah. growing. No, it wasn't growing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of parties to throw. I wasn't really like a party throwing type of person. Yeah. So it just, that again, just fell to the wayside. And then, um, but I had kept seeing because I have early childhood development on my social media. I talk about homeschooling, the preschool age, the kindergarten age. And so my ads were starting to show me things that were yeah. on those lines. And I kept seeing, okay, there's this free book, become a preschool or start a preschool. And I'm like, what is this about? Can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> what is this about? So yeah. I got a free book. And I read it in one day and yeah. I was just like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. This is something that I can do. Not a lot of time I have to put into it. Um, and I have the energy, I have the motivation. And I was just looking for something to fit us. Yeah. And I found it. I found it. And I was I was juiced after that. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm ready to go. Cause I've built, um, a blog before. So I know kind of the business aspect of trying to do marketing and building a website and, you know, attracting an audience. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, this is great. I love this. And it just went on from there. I think it was, um, February of this year is when I got my book. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. So where are you now? <laughs> now? Okay. So my preschool started with summer camp in June of this okay. year. And now we are in our first official semester. I have five students. Nice. Um, not my original five. I did start off with five, but I have a few OGs in there mixed with some new um, kiddos who yeah. I, I, these, when you get on the camera with your students, because I teach online, okay. when you get on the camera with your students, it's like, you can be having a bad day before you get on there. But when you see those little faces, you're yeah. like, okay, mm -hmm. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is mm -hmm. where I'm at. And this is where I'm supposed to be at. And we're good. Yeah, totally. I'm good. Yeah. This is my business and it's now my passion. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's true. No matter what your day was. I mean, last year when I was teaching online and in person, I would be so like after I taught two classes of in person and I was like pregnant the whole time, I was so exhausted. And I had like <laughs> half an hour in between the end of my local class to the start of my online class. And I was so exhausted. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like doing this. And then as soon as the, the camera turned on, I'm like, ah, and, and it would go like that. And I had so much yep. fun and I'm like, oh gosh, I love this. Yep. And sometimes like, oh, I go over my time because I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, it goes by so fast. And I want to teach them that. And I just mm -hmm. want to teach them so much and try to crowd so much into my schedule. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, you guys can leave, but I got this <laughs> little extra thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So how are your classes structured? How many days do you meet and what times? Okay. So I have two options for parents. They can come three days a week or five days a week. Okay. So of course I'm teaching five days a week and that is all live for an hour. Okay. Um, and so Mondays we'll dive in with our letter of the week. Tuesdays, we'll talk about our theme of the week. Wednesdays, um, it used to be a number of the week, but now because of all the added bonuses to the hub, it's going to be Spanish. Mm. And um, Thursdays is again the theme. So we're going to learn a little bit more about the theme and go on a virtual field trip. And mm. then Fridays is our virtue of the week. Ooh, virtue of the week. I haven't heard that yet. What virtues have you done so far? 
So far we've done, I am obedient, I am honest, I am kind, I am forgiving, I am helpful, and um, I think I'm missing one, I am diligent. I am Ooh, nice. That's fun. Yes. Cool. So how do you market your preschool? Is that, do you give it like a niche or do you market it as all around preschool program? Just an all around full curriculum preschool program. Um, I like to um, focus on the letters and the sounds that they make, but I just, I really like to focus on the students like mm -hmm. my students are my top priority so wherever they're at I meet them there and we go from there nice and are all of them three to five no I actually have an advanced two-year-old nice. um who's he's like star player yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And how did you find your students? Was it the founding All family Facebook. group? Facebook, All Facebook, um, mom groups from my area. So I have a few students who are um, in my actual area and some who are. Okay. And where are you located? I'm in Arizona. Arizona. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, did you get them from the founding family script? Did you use that? Um, not any of these kids. I'm trying to think. Uh, no, not any of these kids. My previous okay. kids, I got uh, five students from that founding family script. And okay. from then it's just, you know, been rotation of different kids and yeah. people who couldn't um, commit the next month. But, you know, mm -hmm. I got someone, you know, to replace or right. things like that. Right now, I'm mostly focused on attracting more um, students because I want to be able to provide um, hefty value and um, more like a large scale but with small classrooms yeah yeah what I'm saying what are you capping your class size to seven seven okay seven kiddos so once you get seven you'll just add another class yes mm -hmm. hopefully higher teachers mm, yeah yeah, yeah. So do you do um, like a teaching time session and then like a preschool pals where they talk? Are they muted at all while you teach or are they talking the whole time with you? Most of the time they are unmuted unless we are listening to a story. Um, but other than that, they're interrupting and standing up <laughs> and they're being preschoolers. And that's what I love about it because it's really low pressure. I'm not drilling your kids <laughs> with yeah. this information because they want to learn it already. And yeah. I want want to make it fun and I don't want to make it restrictive mm -hmm. because um I mean public school for me was extremely restrictive yeah. it was not creative and it, it didn't inspire anything inside of me right. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like I don't I want to begin their educational career with something that can be memorable to them something that they say okay I remember Miss Tati and she really she planted a seed in my learning, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want it to be like, you know, like <laughs> I said, restricted. <laughs> yes, baby. You know? Mom in 24 <laughs> seven. Of course, of <laughs> course. So how has your experience doing all those other things that you tried before this carried over and helped you in this journey? Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, completely different yeah. um but I've learned that when you are not just looking for something to pay the bills and you're looking for something that can fulfill you as well as a need of someone else mm -hmm. then that is that's that's the journey that everyone should be looking for that's the yeah. path that everyone should be following something that you can be passionate about that can also serve others because yeah. it's something about, you can be passionate about something, but if it's not serving, it's like, okay, I'm passionate about this, but service, I mean, especially for women, um, service is just part of who we are. And of course we have our families that we serve and our spouses that we serve, but when you can serve, excuse me, when you can serve and um, do something for another mother and her children, 
Yeah. It just, it gives and keeps on giving, whether it's mm-hmm. monetary or you just, your heart is just full. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I feel like this is the most like fulfilled I've been just like in a career just because I can give them what they really need. You know, when I was a teacher in the district, I, I I loved those kids so much, but I felt every day I left and I felt like I wasn't able to give them what they needed. And so I just, I felt like defeated all the time. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like I'm able to give these kids like such an awesome experience, especially in the pandemic when most kids didn't get to have an awesome experience. And it's so cool to know that like 24 kids a year, you know, 24 kids right now, I'm getting to give them like, they're excited to come here and they're learning so much. And this will set the foundation for like the rest of their lives. You know, yeah. this, this early childhood experience, it's, it's teaching them what, you know, they'll go on to do. And it, it's such a cool feeling. It really is. It really is. It's yeah. Really and cool. giving the, the moms, you're right. The moms too. I mean, the moms are so grateful and yeah. then they're meeting each other. It's really cool to see them meet each other and then yeah. start to, you know, that they'll set play dates up and it's like oh, <laughs> we're giving you know we're giving these families more community it's creating the so community cool. that yeah. they didn't even realize they needed exactly exactly yeah. creating community was like a big goal when I started this and it was kind of hard with COVID because they can't come in and volunteer right. and they can't do all this stuff but now they're you know they're just because their kids are such good friends now they're starting to be good friends and it's just really awesome to yeah. to be the facilitator of people's friendships. I guess. I Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. it's cool. Absolutely. So how has um, preschool all stars helped you along this journey? Oh, man. I mean, the process has been sped up maybe a hundred times than what it would have been if I had done it on my own. And I definitely wouldn't have thought of all these um, this a- added value that is provided by all the things that can come with preschool Mm -hmm. all-stars one of the best things that I think has come with preschool preschool all-stars is the community the sisterhood I've created the phrase sisters because every time I went into the group and I asked the question I mean within seconds people are there to support Mm -hmm. People are there to give answers, to give um, constructive criticism or to just give a congratulations or you got this or anything. It's just right on time. Mm. Always. Yes, definitely. Agreed. Agreed. How much do you charge for your online class? The three day class is 87 per month and the five day class is 107 per month. And I charge a $50 registration fee once a year. Mm, Okay. And tell us a little more about the, I, cause the hub is just coming out with all sorts of new stuff and I'm not even up to date with it. (laughs) I'm a little bit (laughs) about the Spanish class, the Spanish that you're, you're offering. How how are you um, implementing that? Yeah, Miss Anna, I have been looking at her previously. I was trying to work it out in my head how I can get that to be a part of my preschool. And I have been going back and forth with her company for a few months now trying to just figure it out. Like, okay, this is, you know, set up on this platform, but I have this platform. How can I get it to where, you know, my kids, my, my preschool kids will be able to you know, benefit from this because Spanish is such a huge language in the United States. So I feel like this is something that our kiddos need to learn, something that they need to be, um, that needs to be soaked up in their little sponge because this is the time to learn it when they're young. This this is the time to learn a new language, if not Mm -hmm. prior to, um, so I want, I really, I was going back and forth with her trying to figure it out. And I just, I was like, okay, I'm stressing myself out. Let me just take a pause really quick. And then a month later, Joy makes this announcement that Spanish is going to be an added bonus. And I was just like, this is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> this is perfect. I've been yeah. waiting for this because I've been trying to figure out ways to, um, you know, kind of diversify my curriculum kind of, um, to where it's not just me teaching the whole time to give myself a break from that mm-hmm. hour and to also, you know, bring in more knowledge because kids just love learning at this age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So do you, um, 
just switch to like turn on her videos and switch to that on your screen so what how i would do it would be i come in and do my usual dance party circle time exercise and introduction to what the lesson would be and then i would go ahead and share my screen for the video and Mm -hmm. we'll go through the lesson in between practice it together a little bit and then of course she also has the activities the crafts and all of that stuff so that's mm-hmm. even more bonus i will mm-hmm. probably do this one day out of the week just 30 minutes out of my class focus on spanish once okay. a week um i know that some people might want to um you know Break divide it, it amongst the yep. week but I just want to, if you know, one day of the week, focus on Spanish and I'm, I can't wait because I haven't started showing it yet. So I'm excited. I think I'm going to start next week. Nice. So, awesome. Yeah. I got to look into that. That would be fun to offer. Yeah. Just get that in there. <laughs> wait. Okay. So where do you see this going in the next few years? Where would you like I mean, it to go? Can you see past the stars? Because I can see it going <laughs> real far. Yeah. <laughs> that. No, seriously, I can see this business growing um, because there's so much scalability with the online preschool. Like I said, I can hire teachers. Yeah. I can grow it to where somebody's teaching at every hour of the day if I really yeah. wanted to and we're just you know creating value and just delivering to these families and it just growing exponentially mm-hmm. I can see that awesome awesome what change in you and your family do you see from a year ago to now well change in me for sure is my confidence in my business as in my business mindset yeah because before I was like okay let me just make a little money but now it's like I have a business I'm a CEO yeah you are girl yeah you are (laughs) so it comes with a different territory you have to have a different mindset and Joy really helped us put in the work the effort and then she laid out all the steps to where there's no confusion you don't have to guess what's going to come next before when I had a business I had a blog and I was looking on other blogs trying to figure out how to run my blog and it right. just wasn't it was just slow moving it wasn't working mm-hmm. and with joy she gives you everything you need mm-hmm. and that helps build your confidence because it's yeah. like when you see the name of the step oh build the website ooh okay <laughs> and then you you see that the steps are all lined up for you Uh and you're like, okay, I could do this. Like, this is actually not that hard, Yeah, but it would have been, (laughs) it could have been. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. (laughs) So yes, my confidence is actually to the roof because of this program. Yes. I love that. I love building, building confidence. We love that. I feel like that's, that's a huge part of it. Absolutely. Love to build up women. That's what oh, we yeah. do. Building up yeah. them women. Because mm-hmm. run the world, girls. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And let's see. What advice would you give to other ladies who are where you were a year ago, who don't have that confidence, who don't know if they can do this? What would you say to them to build them up? I would say that this is the right step. This is the right way to go. You see a fork in the road and you choose joy. And that's a hashtag, choose joy. (laughs) It is a hashtag. (laughs) Choose joy. So yes, I would say that um, if you watch these interviews with these preschool all-stars and you feel anything, you feel a pull, follow your instincts because all of us have felt that same pull Mm -hmm. before we started and now look at us yeah totally so follow your instincts you know what to do yeah follow your instincts choose joy (laughs) yes awesome well I wish you so much luck in your journey I can't wait for you to 
shoot past those stars yes, and you as well thank you <laughs> yeah i look forward to hopefully catching up next time and oh, seeing yeah. where you're at absolutely i can't wait awesome thank you so much for talking to us i had a great time you too bye 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 if you'd like to have a success story just like that one, I invite you to join our Preschool All-Stars. It's my exclusive membership community where you'll get mentorship from me with weekly Q&A lives, support and guidance and friendship from hundreds of women on the exact same journey as you starting running and growing their preschools, and my exclusive access to Preschool University, every training and done for you file that you'll need for every milestone on your journey to help you start, run and grow your preschool. We've all been there and we've got the exact same steps that you need to go through, but we do it all very quickly so that you don't have to waste time or money doing the wrong things at the wrong time. We'd love for you to join our Preschool All-Stars membership. Just go to preschoolallstars.com or click the link in the description to a immediately jump into Preschool All-Stars. Again, go to preschoolallstars.com and we'll see you there.